Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about some new research that's come out that's compared uh, heel lifts within a shoe to an eccentric exercise program for Achilles tendinopathy. Now, I'd like to talk about uh, research a fair bit and, and often people wonder, well, why is this research so important? Well, in things like tendinopathy, it's especially important because we know that up to around about 45% of people don't seem to respond to our standard treatments, our progress aggressive loading programs. So really, wherever possible, we need to look at other options that we can use in clinic that will help them get good results. So when we have a study like this that tries a slightly different approach, I think it's really valuable to have a look in that study and see what we can take from it clinically. And that's ultimately what I'm looking for when I'm looking at research is what can I take from this that's going to be useful clinically for the patients that I'm seeing uh, from day to day. The other thing to consider with any treatment is what we call the treatment burden. Now, we often think if you give people 10 uh, options of treatments that they can, they can use, maybe exercises and things, that we've done a great job. We've given them lots of options they can use. But actually, sometimes the more you give people to do, the greater burden you're placing upon them. They might already have a pretty fi uh, full day. So if we're giving them lots of extra exercises and strategies to put, put in on top of that, it increases that burden and it can be become quite difficult to keep the treatment going. So something like an in-shoe uh, heel lift that you can just simply put in someone's shoes that has very little treatment burden for them, if that can help pain, then that really is potentially quite a useful treatment, particularly for people that aren't able to do the exercises perhaps uh, as we might like them to. Uh, so let's delve into this study. Uh, it's from Rebusen et al. I've put a link uh, to it in the title there. There's also a link to our free webinars on our resource page. So you can check that out if you'd like to learn about lateral hip pain or low back pain uh, in athletes and find out about how you can manage those conditions. Now, this study from Rebusen et al., they recruited 100 people with Achilles tendinopathy and they then randomized them into one of two dif different treatment groups. So one group got these in-shoe heel lifts, which was a 12 millimeter heel lift within their shoe. And they were uh, told to put that in uh, both their shoes uh, and put that in three different pairs of shoes that they wear fairly frequently. So they're going to be using those heel lifts uh, fairly commonly. And the second group were randomized to get eccentric rehab, uh, the Alfredson protocol that I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, it's quite a time consuming protocol, I believe it's about 180 reps a day for 12 weeks, uh, progressively adding load to try and help the Achilles. So they, they went with this approach and they used a primary outcome measure of the Visa A, which is a questionnaire, a great outcome measure um, for Achilles tendinopathy. And they looked at it at the 12 week stage to compare the outcomes. Now, what they actually found is in this Visa A at 12 weeks, the heel lift group did better than people doing eccentric exercises. On average, with the heel lift group, their Visa A scores improved by 26 points compared to an improvement of 17.4 points in the eccentric group. And that led uh, the authors to reach this conclusion that the heel lifts were more effective than the calf muscle eccentric exercises in reducing pain and improving function at 12 weeks. So it's tempting then to, to think, OK, maybe this evidence tells us that our eccentric um, uh, heel raises may actually be outperformed by a simple in-shoe heel lift. However, as with any research, it's important to dig into the details a little bit more. And what you find is although there was a difference there, it didn't exceed the minimal clinically important difference of 10 points. So it's debatable how relevant that small difference in Visa A is at the 12 week stage. They also didn't uh, take the follow up beyond 12 weeks and there's no control group here. And what I find quite interesting about this study is if you look at the secondary outcome measures like calf strength, they didn't actually improve with either intervention. And about half the people in the study reported pain at different sites like the knee. So I think it'd be really interesting if they put a control group in there, maybe with just some education around load management to see if actually simple education was as good as these two interventions that they used here. So to answer the question that we set out, uh, you know, with the, from the start here, are uh, heel lifts superior to eccentrics? Um, the answer at the moment is we probably can't say yes that they are. We need more evidence in this. We need more long-term studies. 
So what can we actually take from this clinically if you're working with a patient with Achilles tendinopathy? Well, one, I think I would actually consider heel lifts as an option. A 26 point improvement in uh, visa A score is actually uh, reasonably good compared to other studies uh, that have looked at other interventions. Um, and it is a, an option that comes with a low treatment burden. I think it might be particularly useful for some patients, maybe those that haven't responded well to exercises or aren't able to do them. Probably it's more likely to suit the less active sedentary individuals. So it may well be a good thing to consider if it's gonna improve their pain and their function and it's an easy thing for them to apply. It's also going to be potentially useful to use an in-shoe heel lift in someone with an insertional tendinopathy. Now this study by Rabusinatul is in mid-portion tendinopathy but insertional Achilles tendinopathies tend to be irritated when they're loaded into dorsiflexion. So an in-shoe heel lift can be quite a good option to reduce dorsiflexion and reduce irritation in someone with an insertional Achilles tendinopathy particularly in those early stages. So potentially useful in that group as well. However, I'd also from this study question whether heel lifts and even eccentrics actually are addressing the patient's rehab needs. I think it's really interesting finding from this study that the, the calf raise test that they looked at, you know, how many calf raises can you complete, didn't actually improve a great deal with either approaches. So doing this eccentric loading program every day, twice a day in fact, for 12 weeks, didn't actually have a massive effect on their ability to perform calf raises. And this mirrors what I'm seeing clinically actually, when I'm seeing patients that haven't responded well to an eccentric program, they don't, they don't seem to have found that their strength needs have been addressed by that eccentric program. So yes, maybe we can consider heel lifts. Uh, second point, maybe we need to, to have some question marks about the uh, efficacy of eccentrics. And thirdly, what I would say is if you're working with a sporty, active individual, you're working with a runner, as you know I love to do, um, we need to consider whether the rehab is going to actually address their needs. So personally, if you're working with someone in that category, I would go with more of a heavy, slow resistance training program that you can progress in terms of load or range of movement and move up towards including plyometrics metric exercises and a graded return to sport. Yes, maybe consider a heel lift within that management, uh, within the shoe, if you think it's going to help pain or function, but we still need something in there that's actually going to address their rehab needs. Because, and, you know, this isn't really something talked about by this paper, but I suspect simply putting a heel lift into a runner's shoe and then telling them just to keep doing what they're doing in terms of training isn't really going to be enough to address their needs. Okay, thank you very much for listening. As I said, that is uh, Rabusinatul's paper, uh, recently published. The link's there are in the information. I've also included a link to a number of free webinars we've put together for you on Achilles tendinopathy, lateral hip pain, and lower back pain. So do check those out. Um, I really like doing these videos, and particularly, I love hearing your questions. So if you've got a question about this study or how we might treat tendinopathy or what we might use in runners, do put them in the comments below. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for those and look forward to uh, coming to those later. Okay, thanks very much for listening. Bye for now.